Amarava, Tejili, Meruad Kamawe, Dehia Tatur, Surva Marava, Nanla Kamadlidina, when a rabbinical student comes before me in a lawsuit, Lo Mazigna, Resha Baye, Sadia Kamadala Mahapichna Bizhute, I do not lean my head on a pillow until I've turned over the merit of the case, of his case. Amamar Bar Rav Ashi, Pesilna Le Litsurva Maravana Ladina, I'm disqualified over a lawsuit to judge a lawsuit involving a rabbinical student, my Tama, the Chavi Valai Kugufai. What's the reason? Because he is as dear to me as my own body. And a person does not uh, see a liability in regard to himself or put himself at risk. Rabbi Chanina mi atav v'kayei apanya demale shabta. Rabbi Chanina would wrap himself in uh, beautiful clothes and stand on Friday Eve uh, towards Shabbat for Shabbat. Amar ba'u v'neteli krat Shabbat hamalka. And say, come, let us go out to greet Shabbat the Queen. Rabbi Yana lavish ma'ane mane male Shabbat v'amar. Rabbi Yana would put on his Shabbos clothes on Friday and say, boy chala, boy chala. Come, O bride, come, O bride. Rabbi bar Rav Huna, ikla leve Rabbi bar Rav Nachman. So Rabbi bar Rav Huna visited the home of Rabbi bar Rav Nachman. Karivu le tlat save tachaye. They brought before him three sour oiled wafers. Amalehu mi hava yaditun de atina. He thought it was an extravagance and he said to them, Did you know I was coming? Amru le mi adifat lanamina. They said to him, Are you any more important to us than Shabbat? Rabbi, meaning that uh, he came on a Friday afternoon and the food was actually for Shabbat, not for him. Rabbi Abba. Zavan Bitlesar Astire Pshite Bisra Mitlesar Tabache. So Rabbi Abba would buy meat from 13 butchers for 13 common Astiras, which is a kind of coin. Umashlim Lehu Atsinora de Dasha and deliver it to the pivot or uh, to the, his door to his staff. Ama Lehu Ashur Haya Ashur Haya. You say to them, they, he said to them to hurry up and cook it before, um, as more meat arrives. Rabbi Abahu Havayativ Atach Taka Deshina Umashif Nura. Rabbi Abahu would sit on a stool of ivory and fan the fire used for cooking uh, for show, the fire used for cooking for Shabbat. Ravanan lavish gunda. Ravanan would put on a black smock to show that he was cooking for Shabbos. Ditna detana deve Rabbi Ishmael, a bracer of the Academy of Rabbi Ishmael, taught begadim shebishel bahen kedera lerabo. The garments in which he cooked a pot for his master al yimzog bahen kos lerabo. He should not wear to pour a cup of wine for his master because the clothes became soiled while cooking. Rasafra Machari Fresha, Rasafra would singe the head um, of the animal being prepared for the Shabbos meal. Rava Malach Shibuta, Rava would salt the Shibuta fish for the Shabbos meal. Ravuna Madlik Sharage, Ravuna would light the lamps. The Shabbos lamps, not the candles. Rav Papa Gadil Petilata. Rav Papa would, would twine the wicks for the lamps. Rav Chista Parim Silka. Rav Chista would mince the beets. Rabba Verav Yosef Metzalche Tzive. They would split the wood. Rabbi Zera Metzatat Tzatute. Rabbi Zera would kindle the fire. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzhak Mechatef Ayel Mechatef Nafik. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzhak would lift up and bring in and lift up and take out. These are the supplies to make the house ready for Shabbat. Amar, he said, Ilo mikalin li rabbi amiv rabbi asimilo machatifna kamayehu. 
So you would say, for Rabbi Yami and Rabbi Yassi were to visit me, would I not lift up bundles in front of them? And he would do no less for Shabbat. And there are those who say, the other way around, Rabbi Yami, Rabbi Yassi, Mechatve, Vayele, Mechatve, Venafke, Rabbi Yami and Rabbi Yassi would lift up and bring in and lift up and take out. Um, Amre, they said, Ilu Iklalan, Rabbi Yochanan, Milo, Mechatfinan, Kame. If Rabbi Yochanan were to visit us, would we not lift up bundles and carry them in and out in front of him? And we would do no, do no less for Shabbat. Uh, okay. Yosef Mokir Shabbe Havahahu Nochri Beshibu Vute. There was a certain Gentile in the Shkona, in the neighborhood of Yosef, who honors the Shabbat. That must be like his, his name. Yosef Mokir Shabbe. Dehavah Nefishe Nichse Tuva. So the Gentile's possessions were very great. Amre le Kaldaye, the astrologer said to him, Kul hu nichse Yosef Mokir Shabbe, Achilahu, all your possessions, Yosef who honors the Shabbat. The Shabbat will consume them, meaning they'll all become his. Azal zabnin hu lechul hu nichse zavan behu mar ganita. So he went and sold all his possessions and Brought and bought with the proceeds, proceeds a magnificent pearl. Otva de Sayena, and he placed in his hat. Bahade Deka Avar Mabra, as he was passing over a river crossing, Afarche Zika Shadye Bamaya, a gust of wind sent his hat in, into the water. Belaye Kavra, a fish came and swallowed the pearl. Askuho aye tuha apanya de male shelter. A fisherman hauled up the fish, brought it ashore on Friday afternoon. Amre manzavin ki hashta. They said, Who about now? Amru lahu zilu amtu yehu. Lagabe yosef mokir shabe de rakil de zavin. They said to them, Go, bring it to Yosef who honors Shabbat, for he has an, the habit of buying uh, in honor of Shabbat. So Shabbos hadn't come in yet. Amtu amat yuha nihale zavne, they brought it to him, and he bought it. Kare ashkach be marganita, he cut it open and he found the pearl inside. Zavne bitle sar. Iviata de dinare de dahava, he sold the pearl for thirteen attics of gold dinars. He's just going to translate it as thirteen vessels filled with gold and dinars. Iviata. Pagabe hahu sava, a certain elder uh, encountered him, Amaman diaziv shabta pare shabta. He who borrows for Shabbat, the Shabbat repays him. Yeah, why would he say borrows? One who lends to Shabbat is where he translates it. He says lends. That's very nice. Okay, so that makes sense using the word lends, not borrows. The uh, Shabbat meme. This little story illustrates an old English saying, a fool and his money are soon parted. Ba'amine Rabbi Rabbi Ishmael ba Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi inquired of Rabbi Ishmael, the son of Rabbi Yossi, Ashirim Shabbat Eretz Yisrael ba'mehen zochin. The rich of Eretz Yisrael, through what do they merit their wealth? Amalo bishvil shema'asirin. Because they tithe their crops, Shneemar. As the verse says, Aser ta'aser, tithe you shall tithe. Which is a, there's a double word there. 
Aser bishvil shitit aser, tithe so that you shall become wealthy. So that's what it teaches. Shebe bavel bamahen zochin, and those in bavel, with what do they merit their wealth? Amalo bishvil sheme chabdin et haTorah, because they honor the Torah. Bishe bishar aratzot bama hen zochin. Through what do they merit their wealth in other lands? Amalo bishvil sheme chabdin et haShabbat, because they honor the Shabbat. I was once a guest of a householder in Lutkia. They brought before him a gold table that required 16 people to carry it. Shal Shalot Shal Kesef Kuotbo. There were sixteen silver chains set in it. Ukarot Vechosot Vekitoniot Utslochiot Kuotbo. There were plates and cups and drinking ladles and bottles set in it. Bar love do you have set in it? Attached to it. Attached to it. That'd be probably what the sixteen silver chains are for. You have this table what? and there. And each, and you have the plates and the mugs and everything, and they're attached by the chain. By so the no chain. one nicks off with it, you reckon? I'd say so. Okay, we'll go with that. Be my guess. I mean, why else would you have the chains? Maybe as a decoration hanging around the edges. Well, love, call me name Achal, the Chomi Neo Megadim Uva Samin. On the table were all kinds of foods and all kinds of delicacies and spices. When they put the table down, they said, To Hashem is the earth and its fullness. Now that's one of the Psalms. But this would be the... Are we talking about this... Uh, The 16 people to carry it, is this what they said, perhaps? That's what it Maybe. sounds like they're saying. Uchashe mesal ki noto omrim hashamayim shamayim la hashem varet natan of adam. And when they, they removed it, they said, As for the heavens, the heavens are hashem, so the earth is given to mankind. Amati lo beni bamezachita lechach. I said to him, my son, through what did you merit all this? This is the owner of the yeah. golden table that takes 16 people to carry it. This is what Chia Barabbas said to him. Amali, Katsav Haiti, I was a butcher. Umikol behemash atana a amati zo kehela shabbat. And from every animal that was nice, meaning of high quality, I would say, let this be for shabbat. Amati lo, I said to him, Ashrecha shezachita uvarucha makom shezikecha lakach. Fortunate are you that you merited this and blessed is God who has granted you all of this. Amalo kesar le Rabbi Yosho ben Hananya. Caesar once said to Rabbi Yosho ben Hananya. Why is it that the food cooked for Shabbat has such a penetrating aroma? Rabbi Yeshua answered, we have this one spice, it is called Shabbat. Which we throw into the Shabbat food and its aroma is very penetrating. Amalo ten lanu hemenu. Give us some of it. Caesar said to him, Amalo kol hama kol hameshomer et hashabbat mo ilo. Whoever observes the Shabbat, for him the spice is effective. Sheino meshomer et hashabbat eno mo ilo. For one who does not observe Shabbat, it is not effective. There's a 
slightly different line taken here. Yeah, it's a, it's it's just interesting that if Caesar could smell the penetrating aroma, then well, Steinsaltz says there's a play between Shevet, dill, and Shabbat. And Shevet, when you use it in cooking, you can certainly smell. So, but there isn't any usage of Shevet in the actual ah, text, but correct? Ah, this is, he translates it as Shevet Go ahead. initially. Go ahead. The Roman emperor said to Rabbi Yahushua ben Hanania, why does the fragrance of a cooked Shabbat dish diffuse? He said to him, we have a certain spice called dill, Shevet, uh, which we place in the cooked dishes yeah, and its yeah. fragrance diffuses. The Shevet Shemo. Ah, uh, ha, ha. The emperor said to him, give us some of it. He said to him, for anyone who observes Shabbat, the spice is effective, and for one who does not observe Shabbat, it is not effective. Mm. So there's a play on Shevet and Shabbat. They're spelled the same way. That's very good. So it's more subtle yeah. than what they're suggesting. Um, this is kind of more chassidisha. It's more the regular sort of thing you hear. I mean, if you think of it, the number of times... Really? You, I, I've heard... But that's so much more shot. Yes. But I've heard so many drashot that talk about this, the spice of Shabbat. When you think about it, the special spice of Shabbat and Shabbat is a, things are spe special spice to food, etc. There's et not even a, a footnote here about anything. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. This is like more it. subtle. I like it. What is the meaning of what's written if you proclaim the Shabbos of delight? The Holy One of Hashem honored. So Rav Hamnuna answered, This is a reference to Yom Kippur, on which there is no eating and drinking. Amra Torah Kabdehu Bichsot Nikia. The Torah said, honor it, however, honor it with a clean garment. Bichibadito, and you honor it. So that's uh, from that, from the Pasuk. Uh, the Pasuk continues by saying Vichibaratoh and you honor it Shabbat by not engaging in your usual ways. Rav Amal Haktim Rav says to advance the time of the meal, meaning eat earlier than usual, Shmuel Amar Lecher and Shmuel says to postpone the time of the meal, to eat later than usual. That's, uh, I've never heard that before. And here he's expanded feast earlier than on other days in order to show that one delights in eating it. And Shmuel said to honor Shabbat, make the Shabbat feast later, so that one's appetite will be greater. Mm. Mm. So that's one of the ways that we don't engage in our, in our customary ways. Mm. Don't have dinner at the same time as you normally would. Amrule bene rab papa bar aval rab papa. Kagona nan dishkiach lan bistra bechamra koyoma. For people like us, for whom it is common to have meat and wine every day, but my nishane, how should we make it different? Amalehu i regilito la akdume achruha. He says to them, if you're accustomed to make your meal early, make it later, i regilito. If you're accustomed to make it late, make it earlier. Rav Sheshit the Kaita Motiv Lahul Rabbanan Hechel de Matia Shimsha. Rav Sheshit would in summer seek the rabbis where the sun would reach. The Sitva Motiv Lahul Rabbanan Hechel de Matia Tula. In the autumn, he would seek the rabbis. Where the shade would reach, kihechi delekumu haya, in order that they should rise quickly. And he said it, 
after the lecture ended and not engage in discussion which would detract from the time devoted to delighting in Shabbat. Rabbi Zera, Mehader Azuzay Zuzay de Rabbanan would go after the pair of rabbis uh, standing together on Shabbos day who were engrossed in Torah. Amalehu bematuta me minayehu lo techalulune. And say to them, please do not desecrate Shabbos. And he's added, by failing to delight in Shabbat. Ah. Okay. So the, the, the mitzvah, according to him, seems to be Food. not just no. that, but delighting in Shabbat to enjoy it for its own sake, not as an opportunity to I mean, food is part of it, but not just as an opportunity to learn a bit more, to concentrate a bit more. Which may have been your customary... Mm. But just, you know, isn't this wonderful that God's given us this Shabbat that we we can enjoy for its own sake? I think that's maybe what's being got at here. Since there is a requirement to enjoy the Shabbos with special foods, one who abstains from these enjoyments, even for the purpose of engaging in Torah discussions, has desecrated the aspect of the Shabbos law. Naturally, this does not mean that one should engage all day in feasting. Rather, Rebbe Zeria, like Rabbi Shesh in the previous story, wished to ensure that when the time came to eat the Shabbos meal, the rabbis would not tarry in the study hall but return home to enjoy the meal. I think, as I said earlier, I think it goes a bit further than that. To delight in something is to delight in it for its own sake. So... I think it goes beyond the fact of eating, but just to be grateful for the fact that you've got Shabbat. Haven't you done that on occasion? What? When your work week is over and Shabbat is here and you say, isn't it wonderful to have Shabbat? This is without it. But even before eating, the fact that you've cut yourself off from your six-day-a-week Life and routine and Shabbat is delightful in itself. Agreed. There's an, interestingly, the Rif and the Rosh cite the Yerushalmi that rules that one may not delay eating on Shabbat past noon, even for the purpose of studying Torah or praying. Ah. And that's also there's also something in that from the Shulchan Aruch. Oh, well, it just goes to show that uh, Caulfield... They make sure, by and large, that you get to the Kiddush before midday. Hmm. Hmm. Beis Yosef also cites that Torah scholars who devote their entire week to the intensive study of Torah should spend proportionally more of their Shabbos eating and enjoying the day. Hmm. Enjoying the day, very good. Those who work a whole week, however, should devote most of their Shabbos day to the study of Torah. Ah. Okay. Um, I suppose that's logical too, because Shabbat frees the sages from the necessity of learning. Yeah. And uh, Shabbat frees us from the necessity of earning a living. I was over at someone's house on Shabbat lunch in the afternoon. And uh, the Bochrim there, they were, I don't think they were that engaged in, like, giving, expounding, you know, bits about the parasha. And, uh... You mean they're behaving like human beings? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, they're engaged in intensive Torah mm-hmm. study all week. Why should they have to come up with it again on mm-hmm. Shabbos? Not that they... There's nothing wrong with that. No. If it's maybe for the delight of Shabbos. But, uh, yeah, why should they be pushed? Amar Rava Vitema Rabbi Yosho Ben Levi. Some say it was Rabbi Yosho Ben Levi. Afilu Yachid Hamid Palel 
the Erev Shabbat Tzarech Lo Maviachulu. Even an individual who prays on the Eve of Shabbat must say Vayachulu. Dama Rav Hamnuna Kol Amitvalu Be Erev Shabbat Lo Maviachulu. Malea Lav Hakatuv Ke Iluna Se Shutaf La Kadosh Baruch Hu Be Maseh Bereshit. Scripture treats him as if he had become a partner to the to Hakadosh Baruch Hu in the act of creation. Shneimar Vayichulu, um, which means they were finished, meaning the heaven and earth were finished. Al Tikri Vayichulu Ela Vayichalu. Do not read this as Vayichulu, and they were finished, but as Vayichalu. And they, meaning the creator and the reciter, were finished. finished. Ah, ah, ah. He who tells the praise of the creator and the praise of the Shabbat is likened to one who contributed to the creation of the world. The purpose of Shabbat is to attest to God's creation of the world. Testimony requires three requires witnesses, and until there are people to stand up and proclaim the testimony to the world, the purpose of the Shabbat and indeed of creation itself has not been fulfilled. Therefore, one who recites Vayichulu and testifies aloud that God is the creator of that God is the creator is deemed a partner in creation. Similar sort of thing quoted here from Or Hachaim. Uh, is Vayichalu supposed to be for when you're praying alone only not to be said all the time do you see that I think it's one of these things that the Rabbana do from uh, time to time you know don't read Bonim read Banim or don't read Banim read Bonim in other words, you find another meaning in the word by reading it in a different way. You know, don't read the children, but the builders of Jerusalem. Yeah. And I think this is a similar sort of thing. But by... There's nothing there about it? Not in any uh, of any length. Mm. The only thing is, uh, since the purpose of creation is for all to acknowledge the greatness of God and to serve Him by proclaiming God, one's faith in the Creator, one sustains the world. Mm-hmm. But do not read it as were finished, and the heavens and the earth were finished, rather as they finished, and the heavens and the earth they finished. Amar Rabbi Elazar, Minayin shehadibum b'kamase. From where do we know that speech is like action? Shenema bidvar Hashem shemaim nasu. The pasuk says, "Where is that from?" From Psalms. To him, right? Yeah. By the word of Hashem, the heavens were made, and by the breath of His mouth, all their legions. Um. So that's that's how Vayichulu is the act of creation. Move on, we will find more. Amar Rav Chisda, Amar Ukva. Kol Amit Palel Be'erev Shabbat Ve'omer Vayichulu. Whoever prays on Shabbat Seiv and says Vayichulu. Shnei Malachei Hasharet HaMelayon Melavin I'll say it again. Shnei Malachi Hasharet Hamelavin Lo Leadam. The two ministering angels that escort a person home on Shabbos Eve, Manichin Yadehen Al Rosho, the Omrim Lo, they put their hands on his head and say to him, The Sar Avonecha, the Chatatecha, Techupar, and your iniquity will depart and your sin will be atoned. Is that the way you've got it? Yes, 
Oh, and your iniquity has passed, and your sin has been returned. So what they're saying is, I mean, it's been said further up, that by saying that um, you're bearing witness... And right. You're giving testimony. Yeah, giving testimony, and as a result of that, you receive the award. Oh, that's nice. Tanya. A brisa to Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda Omer, Shnei Malachi Asharet Melavin Lo Leadam Be'er Shabbat Mi Beit Hakneset Leveito. Echad Tov, one is good, Echad Ra, and one is bad. Uch Sheba Leveito Matan Ner Daluk V'Shulchan Aruch Umitato Motzaat, and when he comes to his home and finds the lamp burning, the table set and his bed made. Malach Tov Omer. Yehiratan shetehele Shabbat acheret kach. The good angel says, may be the will of God that it should be this way the next Shabbat as well. Umalach ra avon one amen baal karcho. And the bad angel has to answer amen against his will. The im love, but if he he comes home and it's not set in this, his house is not set this way. Malach ra omer. May be the will of God that it should be this way the next Shabbos as well. And the good angel is supposed to answer Amen against his will. Amar Rabbi Lazar. So now about setting your table. Leolam Yesader Adam Shulchano Be'erev Shabbat Shabbat Afal Pisheno Tarech El Alich Zayit. Person should always be make sure to set his table on Shabbos Eve, even though all is required to eat is an olive. Vamar Rabbi, no, the amount of an olive. Because I ate. Vamar Rabbi Chanina. Leolam, yesader adam shulchano bemotzei Shabbat afal pishenol terech ela lichzeit. A person should always set his table on the night following Shabbat even though he needs to only eat the amount of an olive. Chamin b'motzei Shabbat melugma. Hot water on the night after Shabbat, so Saturday night, mm. is a remedy to drink and wash with Rashi says. Patchama b'motzei Shabbat melugma. Hot bread on the night after Shabbat is a remedy. Since it is forbidden to cook on Shabbat, one generally does not have water to drink that day, have hot water to drink that day, nor can one wash on Shabbat with warm water. Thus, a hot drink and washing with warm water after Shabbat serve as a restorative. Rabbi Abahu Havav Tin Leiba Puke Shabta Igla Tilta. Rabbi Abahu would have a third calf, or a third-born calf? What does That's, that mean? I don't know what it means, and it don't expand it. They just says, the conclusion of Shabbat, a third-born calf. The meat of such a calf, was, there's no note about a third-born calf? No. The meat of such a calf was considered superior. The first two calves of a cow produced when the cow has not yet reached its full maturity are generally not as robust as the third one. Choicest meat is therefore assumed to come from the cow's third offspring. Alternatively, this term refers to a calf that has grown to one third its adult size when its meat is tastiest. That sounds, I that, think, the most likely. Real. It sounds the most likely, don't you think? Probably. Um, prepared for him on the night after Shabbat, Hava Chilmine Kulaita, and he would eat from it. The kidneys, kigadala vimi bereim. One kidney, according to ah, the Shana. kidney, kigadala vimi bereimale. When his son Avimi grew up, he said to his father, "Lama lach laf sude kulehai? Why should you waste all that meat? Nishbok kulieta mimale shabta. Leave over a kidney from the Friday night meal instead, right?" Shabkuhu 
Va'ata Arya Achle. Next week they left over a kidney from the Shabbos meal and a lion came and ate the calf that they would have otherwise have slaughtered. Well, they left the calf. They killed a calf before Shabbos. Right. And obviously had one of the kidneys then. And the son has suggested they save the other kidney for after Shabbat. So one Shabbat, the second calf was left alone. And the lion came. And the lion came and it. They left the calf and did not slaughter it. And the lion came and it. And he's added, this teaches that one should not be miserly when it comes to offering Shabbat. Except it wasn't. No, it should not be miserly. Ah, so they would have eaten that kidney on the Shabbat, but they left it over. Mm. So they didn't take full pleasure in what, in their preparation. Yeah. The full advantage of the advantage. sake of Shabbat. Amar Rav Yosho ben Levi, Kol Ha'oneh Amen, Yehesh me Rav Mevrach Bechol Kocho, Whoever responds with all his might. Korin lo gazadino. The evil decree in judgment against him is torn up. Shneemar. Bifro paraot beisrael bihit nadev am barchu Hashem. When calamities are averted in Israel, when the people dedicate themselves, bless Hashem. Maitama bifroa praot. What's the reason that calamities are averted? Mishum de baruchu Hashem because they bless Hashem, or they dedicate themselves to blessing Hashem. Rabbi Chia bar Abba ma Rabbi Yochanan, afilu yesh bo shemet shel apoda zara mochalin lo. Even if there is a trace of idolatry in him. He is forgiven. Ketiv hacha bifro paraot, as it's written, when paraot are nullified, uchtiv hatam ki farua hu, and it's written there about the golden calf, and Moshe saw the people that they were parua, uncovered. He translates that as wild. Oh, wild. According to Rabbi Yochan, the use of the root paroi in connection with the idolatry of the golden calf indicates that the word paraot from the from judges is a reference to the sin of idolatry. Rabbi Yochan therefore interprets as follows. When paraot idolatry is nullified, ah, it is because the people bless Hashem's name. Ah, I see, I see. Do you follow that? No, I follow the general line of reason that if you praise God, you're denying the wild, the well, the idolatry that lurks within you, mm. even. Yeah. I'm a Reish Lakish. Kol Hanu Amen Bechol Kocha. Whoever responds Amen with all his might, Potchin Lo Share Gan Eden. The gates of the Garden of Eden are open for him. Shnei Ma Pischo Sharim Yavo Goy Sadik Shomei Amunim. Open our gates and let the enter rush. Let the en- let enter the righteous nation that keeps faith. Shomei Amunim. Al Tikri Shomei Amunim. Ella Shomrim Amen. Don't read Shomei Amunim, but rather Sheomrim Amen. Ha ha. That's a nice little. That's cute. My Amen. What is Amen, Amar Rabbi Hanina, El Melech Neeman? God, trustworthy King. By responding, Amen, a person affirms his belief in God's sovereignty and trustworthiness. Amar Rav Yehuda Barei de Rav Shmuel Mishmei de Rav. Ein hadlei kamitsuya ella bimkom sheyesh chilul Shabbat. Fires are not common except in a place where there is Shabbos desecration. Shnemar, the im lo tishmo elai lekadesh et yom hashabbat uvil ule 
vilti se'et masha, sorry, se'et masa v'gomer. But if you will not listen to me to sanctify the Shabbos day and not to carry any burden, etc. Vitzati esh bishareha v'achla armanot Yerushalayim v'lo tichbe. Then I will ignite a fire in its gates and it will consume the palace of Jerusalem and it will not be extinguished. My v'lo tichbe. What does it mean? Will not be extinguished. Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak b'sha'ah she'en bnei adam mitzuyin lechabota at a time when there are no people around to extinguish it. Amar Abaye lo charva Yerushalayim ela b'shul shechilu ba et hashabbat. Jerusalem was destroyed only because they desecrated Shabbat. In it, Shneimar, as it says in the pasuk, umi Shabbat totai heilimu enaim ve vaechal betocham. The Kohanim have done violence to my Torah. And from my Shabbat they averted their eyes and I beca- became profaned in their midst. Amar Rabbi Abahu Lo charva yishom ela bishvil she bitlu kriya shma shacharit varavit Jerusalem was destroyed only because they neglected to recite shma mornings and evenings. Shne mar hoi mashkimei baboka shechar Yudofu v'gomer. Woe to those that arise early in the morning and pursue old wine that linger late into the night till wine inflames them, is the rest of the Pasuk. Meaning they spend their mornings and evenings when they should be reciting Shema, drinking and partying. Uchtiv, and the next verse it says, and the harp and the lyre, the drum and the flute and the wine and there are their parties. But to the works of Hashem, they do not look. And then it says, Therefore, my people have gone into exile for want of knowledge. Another cause for destruction, Amar Rav Hamnuna, Lo Chara Yisholem Ela Bishul Shibit Lo Bati Nokot Shel Beit Rabban. Jerusalem was destroyed because they devote only because they diverted the school children in it from their Torah studies. Shneimar Shvoch Al Olal Bachutz V'Gomer to pour fury on little children in the streets. Ma ta'am shafah, what's the reason for pouring out the fury? Mishum de olal bachutz, because little children are in the street instead of in the classroom where they belong. Amar ula, lo harvei shulam ela mikne shulohat lahem, busha aboshet panim zemize, because the people had no shame for each other. Shneemar, Hovishu ki to eva asu gam bosh lo yevoshu v'gomer. They should have been ashamed, for they committed an abomination, yet they are not at all ashamed. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, lo chavay shoyim ela bishvil she hoshvu katan v'gadol, because the small and the great were considered equal, shneemar baya ka'as ka'kohen, and it shall be as the people as it shall be as with the people so with the Kohen. And he's translated it as as it is stated, and the common people were like the priest, the slave like his master, the maid servant like her mistress, the buyer like the seller, the lender like the borrower, and the creditor like the one indebted to him. So I say Uchtibatrei, and straight after it says, Hibok tibok ha'aret, the land will be utterly emptied. Mm. I think I might have read that Bahaya ka'as kakohen, and that should be Bahaya ka'am kakohen. Amar Rav Amram Bereza Rabbi Shimon Barava, Amar Rabbi Shimon Barava, Amar Rabbi Chanina. Lo charve shalom ela bishul shelo hachichu ze et ze, because the people did not admonish one another. Shneemar. They didn't give tochacha. Hayu sareha 
Ke'ayalim lo matu mir'e. It's beautiful like hearts. Do you have hearts? Um, uh, it's the same as hearts, stags. Stags. I thought a heart was a, a kind of a rabbit. No, no, no. A heart is a, oh, a, deer. a male deer. Oh. And the female is a doe. What am I thinking of? What's the rabbit? What's, the, what's another kind of rabbit? A, a hare. hare. That's what I'm of. Um, it's leaves all like hearts that found no pasture. Ma'ayal zerosho shel zeh betzad znavo shel zeh. Just as this heart turns, he said it. Turns his head. Mm. Yeah, what, what's your explanation of that? Yeah. Just as this stag turns its head towards the other's tail when it grazes, and each one feeds on its own. Uh, so too the uh, Jewish people in that generation lowered their faces to the ground and did not rebuke one another. So each one went about his own business, not caring for the others. Its leaders were like hearts that found no pasture. Pretty so fine. No, wouldn't it be if they found pasture, their heads would be down yeah. grazing? There, there's a contradiction. But her ministers were like stags that found no pasture, and he continues the quote, and they walked without strength before their pursuer. With some lamentations. And they walked without strength before, before their pursuer. Just as this thing turns it towards the other tail when it grazes. I don't think it means when it grazes. This my mind says just as this heart walks in a herd with the head of this one next to the tail of that one. So they're walking in a line. Mm. They're walking in a line um, as captors of their pursuer or they're fleeing. Same idea, though, when you think about it. I mean, they're walking in a line. They're, they're weak. And their pursuers behind them. Her ministers were like stags that found no pasture, and they walked without strength before their pursuer. So each one was only concerned with himself. They have no strength. And, you know, the, the idea is there. I think you're right that Steinsaltz has, in his explanation, has distorted it a bit. But the essence of it is that each one's only concerned with himself. It's got no strength or concern for anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's... Okay. Amar of Yehuda. Lo harisham ela bishvil shibizu ba chachamim. Jerusalem was destroyed only because they demeaned Torah scholars in it. Shnemar, the vayihu mal idim the malachei ha'elohim uvozim tvarav umit umitatim bin viav, but they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets. Ad alot chamat Hashem ba'amo ad. Le'en Marpe, until the wrath of God rose up against his people, until there was no rep- there was no remedy. My mm. ad ein Marpe. So what does it mean until there was no remedy? Amar Rav Yotamar Rav, Kol Hamevazet Talmidei Chachamim Ein Lo Refor Lemakato. Whoever demands Torah scholars, there is no remedy for. His wound. Ah. And then he's added yeah. uh, as a footnote. 
this statement is supported by various verses, see Kings um, 1.13, that indicate that God is forgiving with regard to his own honor, but does not forgive the disparagement of his messengers and the righteous. Therefore, one who disparages Torah scholars will certainly be punished. Amar Rav Yudha Amar Rav, my dear Al tigu b'mishichai uvin v'yai al tareyo. What does it mean? Do not touch my anointed ones and to my prophets do no harm. Al tigu b'mishichai elu tinokot shel beit raban. Do not touch my anointed ones. This refers to school children. Uvin v'yai al tareyo elu talmidei chachamim. And to my prophets is reference to Torah scholars. Amar Reish Lakish Mishum The world continues to exist only in the merit of the breath of school children, as they utter words of Torah. Amale Rav Papa Labaye, Didi Vididach, my breath and your breath. Um, what about them? As in, aren't our studies as significant? Amale, Eino Dome Hevel Sheyesh Bochet, Level Sheyen Bochet. Breath that contains sin cannot be compared to breath that does not contain sin. Oh, below the age of 13, they are unaccountable. I find it extraordinary sometimes the lack of humility in their in their statements. Do you follow what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. And uh, and I agree with you. However, those who wouldn't agree with you mm. would say that they were so great that. Um, to what do we say? Admit the sort of level of thought that we see in ourselves would be a denial of where they stand. Yeah. stand. Yeah. I suppose in a way this is meant to actually be like a like a textbook. So they might consider well. One day there'll be a Torah scholar out there who's going to say, well, what I learn isn't that as good as what the children learn. Mm. And there has to be some response to someone who thinks that they're above it or equal to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, Reish Lakish Mishum Rav Yodun Nesia Ein mevatlin tinokot shel beit rabbana filu levinyan beit hamikdash. We don't divert school children even for the sake of building the rosh, the beit hamikdash. Sorry. Vamar reish lakish ve l'rabbi yodon nesia. Kach mekublani me avotai. I've received the following tradition from my fathers. Vamre la mavotech and sons say from your fathers, from Rebbe and the princes before him. Kol ir she'ein ba tinokot shel beit rabban macharavin ota. Any time which were there, there were no school children uh, studying Torah is ultimately destroyed. Ravina amar macharimin ota. Ravina said it is eventually annihilated. Ba marava lo charei shalamela bishvil shepasku imina anshe amana. Jerusalem was destroyed only because people of truth. Disappeared from us. Neymar. Do you have the word disappeared? Shepaskul. Yeah. Jerusalem was destroyed only because there were no more trustworthy people there, as it is stated. Neymar. Shotetu bechutzot Yerushalayim uru uruna uzu uvakshu birchovoteha. Search in the open place of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in its streets. Im timsu ish im yesh osem ishpat me vakeshe muno be eslachla. If you'll find a man, if there is one who dispenses justice, who seeks the truth, 
and I will forgive her. Uh -huh. By the way, in that... Me. Go on. For Jerusalem, you only have to find one just person. They needed ten for Stom. That's a good one. In that Pasuk um, that we just read, mm -hmm. uh, in Hebrew, in the word Yerushalayim, is there a Yur? Yes, Yerushalayim. For some reason, I haven't put the yod in the in here. I don't know why. It's always possible that one letter is missed in some way. So they did it on the uh, but both sides. No, no, not in here, but on a previous page where the word your line was quoted, they did it as wrong. I'll see if it continues that way. Any, is this indeed so? The Amara of Katina. I feel we should kill Kishlana Shel Yisrael Milo Pasku Mimena Anshe Amana. Even the hour, in the hour of Jerusalem's downfall, people of truth did not disappear from it. Shneimar Kid Pos Ish Berchiv Beit Aviv Beit Aviv Simla Lecha Katzin Tiyelano. When a man will grab hold of his brother of the house of his father. And say, you have a garment, be a chief for us. Tvarim shebnei adam mit kasim bahen kisim la yeshanan beadecha. Matters of Torah concerning which people cover themselves up, as with a garment, are in your hand. Vehamech vehamach shela hazot tachat yadecha. And let this stumbling block be under your hand. That is, since you are knowledgeable, let the teaching of Torah be under your hand. Do you want to say anything there? No. That's the end.